Hi, this is Mike. Welcome to Bitfixer. Today I'm going to try to fix a Commodore PET 2001N. This PET belongs to a guy named Jeff. He was having problems with it and asked if I could help to fix it, and I decided to give it a try. So first, let's open up this very well-packed box that Jeff sent me. I'll make sure to save all the packing material for when I mail it back to him. The reported symptoms of this pet were that it would start up and sometimes run for a minute or so and then freeze or random garbage would show up on the screen. Jeff's computer is a PET 2001N with 32K of RAM. After a quick visual inspection of the board, it looked very clean. I didn't see any evidence of oxidation or corrosion, except a little bit maybe on the edge connectors in the back, but otherwise appeared to be in very good shape. I put the board into a PET 2001 chassis I had that's a little rusty and needs cleaning, but I know it works. I was so eager to try it out I forgot to turn the camera sideways. And when I fired it up for the first time, I saw this, mostly blank screen with a few random characters. So before starting the repair, let's take a field trip to the beach where electronics belong. This device is called the Romulator, and it's a gadget I built a couple of years ago and it should have some features which will help us debug what's wrong with Jeff's pet. The Romulator is a RAM and ROM replacement board for 6502 based computers. In addition to that, you can also use it to halt a running CPU and dump the contents of the Romulator's memory over to a Raspberry Pi that's connected. This can be useful when you're debugging a system. Despite what you see here, exposure of the Romulator to salt water, sand, or seagulls is not recommended. We're back, and again with the portrait video. We've installed the Romulator here in the PET, and I'm going to try to use it to replace all the ROM and RAM in this machine, and just see what happens. Let me fire it up and look at that. We see the basic four text come up, and one might be tempted to think that the PET is fixed now, but I'm not going to spoil the surprise. And then I tried it again with just the RAM replacement turned off, and we get a garbage screen. That would tend to indicate that there might be a problem with the RAM. And then once more with the ROM replacement turned off, and it actually starts up, which is a pretty strong indicator that the ROMs are probably good, and there is likely a problem with the RAM. But after running with the RAM and ROM replacement on for a little while, and trying out some basic programs, I noticed that some interesting characters started showing up on the screen. Little bits of garbage would keep popping up, but strangely enough it did not seem to affect the functionality of the computer. I could still run basic programs, and they seemed to run okay, so I wasn't quite sure what was going on here. So it's back to the Romulator, and this time I'm going to try running a couple of simple RAM tests that I cooked up. And in this one we can see that page 0 byte 2 has a fault. It read 4-0 when it should have read 0, zero. And then a slightly more comprehensive test, and I'm sorry my camera keeps not being able to focus on the CRT text, but this shows us that the video RAM actually tests good. It tests good up to 8800 hex, and there's a fault at 0202. Again, we expect to read 00, zero and we read 40. From the RAM test we just did, we found out that we expected 0, 0, and we actually read 4, 0, which means that bit 7 was wrong uh, and perhaps stuck high when it should have been low. Um, so looking at the schematic here for the uh, RAM in the PET, this bank of RAMs here represents the low 16K. This bank here is the higher 16K. 
and the bits go from here to here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and four zero corresponds to bit seven on the data bus. So this chip here, it's a 4116 RAM and it's at I3. So it's possible that this chip might be the problem. Um, it's also possible that something else connected to that data line uh, could also be the problem. And that would lead us here to this 74LS244 buffer uh, at I11, uh, which is connected to that RD6 line. So that's also a possibility. Um, I decided to try piggybacking a working 4116 chip onto the RAM corresponding to bit 7. But what you're seeing here is actually me piggybacking the wrong chip because this is before I checked the schematic. What I assumed was bit 7 was actually bit 2, so this is not going to work, but this is basically what it looks like. And the theory is that a working chip on occasion will temporarily fix the problem so you can tell where the bad chip is. I ran the RAM test again after piggybacking the correct chip and we still have the 40 where we expect to read 00, which gave me a little bit of doubt as to whether that chip was actually the problem. I wasn't quite sure how to proceed here, but I decided to try the other chip connected to the same data line, the 74LS244 at I11. And now it's time for a desoldering montage. <coughs> After changing the 74LS244 with a known working chip, the results of the RAM test changed, but it didn't fix the problem. So I decided to change the RAM chip corresponding to bit 7 as well. So after replacing the RAM, something else happened. I got a garbage screen on startup. Had I broken something? At this point, I didn't know whether the CPU was running and it was just the VRAM that was having problems or if something else was happening. So I decided to use the Romulators function to halt a running CPU and download the contents of memory. So I connected up the Raspberry Pi to the Romulator and I ran the script which downloaded the entire 64K memory map onto the Raspberry Pi. Viewing this file as a binary dump, I can search to the video RAM section and see if the 6502 successfully wrote anything to that area of memory. And here we see that VRAM 8000, which indicates that the test of VRAM failed at address 8000 hex. That's the very beginning of the VRAM section, so it failed right away. And we see that it expected FF and it read 77. So does this mean that the video RAM itself is bad or something else? I wasn't sure the VRAM alone was at fault, but I decided to desolder and test it anyway. A quick test after replacing the video RAM showed me that this did not completely fix the problem. So I wanted to check a couple of signals related to writing and reading from video RAM. TV RAM read write and TV RAM RW. I connected the Romulator again, this time set to the NOP generator. 
This causes the CPU to keep reading the NOP or NOOP instruction from memory. This causes the CPU to loop through the entirety of memory space, always reading and never writing. And here we're looking at the TV read signal. This signal is active when video RAM is being read from. There's 1K of video RAM and 64K of total memory space. So I expected the signal to go low for 1 64th of the time. This looks consistent with what we're seeing on the scope here. Then I looked at the TV RAM read write signal and saw that it was toggling. I wasn't sure this was correct because I expected that signal to only be read from and not written to. So I decided to take a closer look at how the TV RAM read write signal was generated. Select one of them. Anyhow, this one, this input here comes in from this gate. This is the buffer, the BRW signal. And when I'm running the NOP generator, this, um, that's always in a read state because it's never writing, it's only reading. So, and then this is the inverse of that. So this is going to be always low, okay? So this is the phi two, the clock signal. That's going to that's going to be high frequency signal, and this is another select signal over here. But the point is, this is a NAND gate. So uh, these all, if these are all high, then this is going to be uh, low. So if these, if any of these are low, then this is going to be high. So this is al this is always low. So this should be solid and high. And uh, what that means is that the output for two here should just be, it's always going to be, it's, in this case, it's always going to be high. It should just be solid high because you have five volts here and two A and you have, should have five volts here and two B. So the output should just be solid high signal. And I am checking on my working pet here. I took a look at the signals on a working pet. This is pin 6 on that quad 2 to 1 MUX. This is the input for the TV RAM read write signal. And this is the output. So you can see that it is a little bit noisy, but it remains at a logic high. And then I looked at the same signals on Jeff's pet. Finding pin 6 here on that quad 2 to 1 MUX. The input looks the same. Solid, high, logic level. And then at pin 7, TV RAM read write, we see that there are little glitches to ground. I wasn't sure what was going on here and wasn't sure if it made any difference, but it didn't seem quite right. So more desoldering as we remove that 74LS157. At this point I realized I didn't have any spare 74LS157 chips, so I decided to bring in a special guest, an Apple II Plus and I borrowed a 74LS257. This chip is not exactly the same as the 157, but with the connections on the PET, it should behave exactly the same. But unfortunately, even after replacement, we still have problems. Back to looking at the schematic, decided to try tracing what was happening with the read-write signal as it went through a couple of different chips here, specifically the buffer at A10 and the inverter at A3. With the NOP generator, the CPU never writes to memory, but I wanted to test the write function to video RAM. So I wrote up a small program which would just write to a location in video RAM over and over again. And I mapped this to one of the settings on the Romulator. If it has write signals repeatedly. Okay. That looks normal. Pin 4 is the output of this buffer. Good. Still there. And now that goes to chip A3. There's an inverter. Okay. The input. Yeah, it's still there, right? There it is. And then output comes on pin 12. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So this is pin, this is pin 13, of chip A3, which is an inverter, 74LS04. Okay, now this, hold on a second, pin 12, yeah, pin 12 should just be the inverse of the signal. And it, am I looking at something that's ground? It's nothing, nothing, zero, right? 
13 and 12. Nothing. All right. I think maybe this is something because, yeah, this drives, this is an important signal. This is the BRW signal and that controls the uh, memory write timing. Yeah, look, that's the read write pen, 13, 12, nothing. All right, well, we've got another chip to replace, A3, hex inverter. Here's the chip we found the fault with at A3. It's a hex inverter, 74LS04. I don't have a desoldering montage for this one, so let's just skip right to the result. So this is interesting. So you can see it's actually, it looks like it's actually running. The CPU is running and it is printing out something on the screen. It's definitely garbled and we're getting a full screen flash there. Um, and I've noticed this odd thing happening too. If I, different keys you push actually change everything in the background. So we're getting some odd manifestation of this bug at this point. So once again, I'm going to do the memory dump trick on the ROM emulator here, running the VRAM test again. And even though the screen is garbled, we should be able to dump what's in VRAM to the Raspberry Pi and see what the CPU actually wrote there. And looking at the dump here, I see it is testing bad at VRAM 8000 hex, which is the first address in VRAM memory. And we expect FF and we read F0. Now that looks to me like one of the VRAM chips is bad. And what I just remembered right now is that the VRAM chips I had in the pet at that moment were purchased new. And I put the old VRAM chips in and ran the test again. And look at that. The screen looks normal and the VRAM is testing good up to 8800, even though you can't see it here because my camera doesn't know what to do with CRTs. So let's start up again. This is without the romulator in and the computer is working. It was just the one bad chip, the 74LS04, and now Jeff's pet appears to be working just fine. And it turned out that one of the two 2114 SRAM chips I bought to replace the VRAM in this computer turned out to be bad. I wrote some basic programs to celebrate. Well, there might be one more thing I need to fix on this pet, but you'll have to wait for the next video to find out. Thanks for watching.